Hallelujah. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. There was all over the world. Good morning to you all. Let's take our reading to the book of First Timothy. Get home and read from chapter 1 to the end. But I will just go through verse 12 there. The Lord grace to Paul. I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has given me strength that he consider me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Verse 13. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Hallelujah. Take your reading from verse 1 when you get home from verse 1 to the end of First Timothy. You have so much to learn here. Hallelujah. I saw a woman when I was coming who nearly felt so much discouraged. I did not know what happened between the woman and the usher and the worker. I said, Madam, what happened? He said, Oh, uh, uh, this is embarrassment. This is, uh, this is uh, uh, oh, embarrassment. Tell me what happened. He said, uh, I was about to come in. Uh, they, 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 they were asking me. I said, Okay, okay. It's like uh, you have so much to tell me, and I'm running out of time. If you have so much to tell me, and I'm running out of time, there's no way I can list it. So let me leave behind, let me just, okay, 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 okay. After the service, just wait for me. Forget about whatever happened. Wait for me after the service, you'll be my guest. She laughed. She has so much to tell me, and I was running out of time. That will base my message today. God cannot use a discouraged servant. I would not say God cannot bless, but let me say God cannot use a discouraged servant. Are you one of the discouraged servants? You can get irritated, anything can overwhelm you, anything, just anything. Maybe somebody messed there. You know the atmosphere was friendly, but suddenly you, you begin to hear some nasty odor. You will not be able to tell uh, your neighbor that somebody has best, but you just feel so worried. This odor is not good. Somebody is messy. Anything can overwhelm you. Anything can discourage you. You just say, mm, I'm living here. And uh, the place you are going may be even worse than where you left. Or uh, even the atmosphere, maybe the weather. You feel, ah, look at the crowd. And I don't know when, how many this man will attend to everyone. What's he doing this morning? God cannot use a discouraged what? A discouraged servant. We must overcome such attitude as a Christian. We must overcome what? Such attitude. As Satan has a way of, I mean, making you overwhelming, worry, complaining. You, you, you are happy now. But little time, maybe when I'm praying for people, I just touched, suddenly maybe, I did not touch you. Ah, these people have followed me here today. 
So if they follow you, they are the one who say I should not touch you. Can you see? Huh? I touch the first. You are the next person to touch. Maybe somebody just fell on the floor, and I try to jump the other way, and I escape you. You say, ah, oh, these people have come here again. If they come here, would they ask me not to touch you? If they have power over you, would they have power over me? Over our Lord Jesus Christ? So anything, just anything. Um, maybe probably you expect it to fall during the touching. You saw your neighbor falling down. But you, you still standing. The thing do not work on me. The thing is not working on me. Ah. You now begin to look at the people that are turning. Ah. And they have touched you, you stay the same. Ah, the thing, it's not work for me. And God does as a way. It's not necessarily you to fall. When God touches you, you may not even experience anything. But God is working out the answer. I may even not touch you, I may just say you, I will leave you. That is the instruction given. That don't touch this man. Don't touch this woman. And the problem is gone. Without touching you, it is instruction. It's not you, it's me. Eh? God cannot use a discouraged servant. We must overcome such attitude. So much attitude can lead to discouragement. So much, so much. Even mosquito. You may be fasting, you find yourself in the mountain for three days, suddenly one big mosquito just come. Oh, that is the one that gave you awareness. What are the ones that have been being in your body for two hours, soaking so much blood? By the time you just move your hand, pull of blood. Oh. Oh, 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 this mosquito has carried many diseases and a lot of discouragement. We must confess with our mouth, like the book of Revelation 12, verse 11. Because what goes wrong maturely comes wrong. And when we plant a wrong seed, the wrong harvest will surely come. So our confession is very, very important. What you say, by saying about ourselves, what the Bible says about us. Tell your neighbor, by saying about ourselves, what the Bible say about us. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. By saying about ourselves, what the Bible says about us, we are made to overcome. The book of Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens. By saying about yourself what the Bible says about you. What the Bible says about you? No matter how unsteady your life appear to be, stay steady. Look at what the Bible says in that book of First Timothy. It says, Paul warned Timothy, not to take a step back when he is sick, when he is attacked, when he is persecuted, he wants him not to take a step back. When he is sick, 
when he is persecuted, when he is discouraged, not to take a step back. But what is happening to you today? And remember, what is good for Timothy? Equally good for us is warning us not to take a step back while we are facing persecution. When we are facing crisis, not to take what? A step back. Because persecution, whatever you call it, are meant for our spiritual benefits. What do you understand about take a step back? By beginning to complain, looking at Jesus in a bad light, why me of all this? Why me of all that? I have stopped smoking, I have stopped drinking. I have I've been praying, I, I go to church regularly. Why all this crisis? Why all that? Why all this? That is the beauty of our journey to internal life. Don't forget, we are not in heaven. Something must punch us, punk us, and test our faith. He went further by saying, Timothy, I know what you are talking about. You are talking about your setback. You are talking about your sickness. You are talking about people that accuse you wrongly. You are talking about this. You are talking about that. Mrs. Long? Yes? We found a baby girl for your adoption, but she has a rare condition. Her life, it won't be easy. It might not be easy, but it'll be amazing. Toyota, start your impossible. When you read that chapter down, it says, he messed up big time. But God enabled him. To mess up big time means a lot he has done, being a persecutor, this, that, blasphemer, that, killer, this, that, that, that. And when you look up the way, enable. It means to support with means, with power, with knowledge. And when God gives enablement, He gives everything. Even though you walk through the valley of shadow of death, you fear not. Paul Apostle shared to Timothy, I know what it is like to feel like giving up. Why seek? To feel like giving up. Why facing disappointment? To feel like giving up. Why facing persecution? He said he know. He know what it like. But he do not do it. He own on and keep fighting. He own on and keep fighting. The beauty of our journey is when you are going and something is, is there to punch you, punch you, punch you. That is the beauty of our journey. But when you are going, not to punch you, you are free, you are free going, free going, free going. How will you know that the father you are serving is beautiful? When you are not set for examination and read and sweat, to get promotion, how will you value the promotion? You are not rich, 
night, day, in the quiet places, reading a lot of textbook, sitting for the exam, very tough, and at the end of the day, you came out brilliantly. How will you value your certificate? Why well, proud to introduce us to me graduates? I have first degree, PhD. You are proud to introduce yourself because of what you have gone through to have that. The beauty of our journey is when something is there to test our faith. That is the beauty of our journey. That is the beauty. But you never knew this. Various tests that will have promoted you spiritually, you fail them because you see them as an attack from the enemy. You see them as undeserved attack, undeserved issue. Instead of you to welcome that and see that as a friend to move you forward. Your situation, a friend to move you forward. Your challenges are friends to move you ahead. Tell your neighbor, let your situation produce a sense of depending on God. I can hear you. Let your challenges produce a sense of depending on God. I can hear you. Again? Yes. When you have a challenge, and that challenge now strengthen your desire for God, it causes you to, to look on to God more, the more. You are a type that sleep anyhow, eat anyhow, but when the challenge comes, you went to fasting. Pray the more. It's no longer challenge, but promotion. Amen. Write this. Let your challenge produce a sense of depending on God. When the challenge come, could be sickness, could be poverty, could be ashes, could be any foolish thing, could be temptation, and you quickly look on to God. You're crying to God. You're crying to God. It's meant for promotion. <laughs> Let your challenge produce a sense of depending on God. That is, when we pray, Oh God, I cannot get along without you. Help me. He will show himself stronger. But when challenges come and does not produce a sense of depending on God, you are leading to grave. Graveyards. Challenges come, could be trouble. And that trouble comes, you enter more trouble again, more trouble again, more trouble again, more trouble again, and you never look on to God to get out of that trouble. You know that is the end of you. How do we know promotion is coming? When challenges come and it produces a sense of depending on God, you know you are about to be promoted. No matter how unsteady your life appears to be, stay steady. Make this confession to your roadmap. I'm standing on the promise of God. I am living steady. 
working steady, remain steady in unsteady times. I choose not to be broke. I choose not to live in poverty. I choose not to walk in disappointment. I choose to walk in God's way. You know, this war is unsteady. It's unsteady. This war you are living with is unsteady. This is why the Bible says, in this war there will be tribulation. Because you know it's unsteady. There will be lying, there will be this, there will be killing, there will be stealing, there will be this. You look here, rubbish. You look that, rubbish. You look that, rubbish. You look back, rubbish. You can't close your eyes walking. Even if you close your eyes, your heart will be me for smoke, for fleshly desire, your heart. Why close your eyes? Your heart will stay me for fleshly desire. So we are unsteady world. Unsteady world. This is why the song said, this world is not my own. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures I lay down somewhere beyond the blues. The angels back on me from heaven's open door. unsteady world. So, I want to leave you here. Take this. When your situation reminds you of God, know that promotion is coming. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, when your situation reminds you of God, Knowing that promotion is coming. This is what I mean by our situation is meant for our spiritual benefit. Our situation produces a sense of depending on God. When you have situation, headache, or doctor say to you, whoa, this is serious, this is cancer, this is cancer, this is liver, and this reminds you immediately of God. Knowing that Promotion is coming. It's not meant to destroy you, but to improve you, your relationship with God. So other people, their situation do not remind them of God. Because that situation are meant to destroy them. But we, our situation reminds us of God. That is why he produced a sense of depending on God. Our situation reminds us of God. That situation needs to improve us. When you have situation, no matter 
how big that situation. And they remind you of God. And you begin to fast, begin to pray. You begin to fast, begin to pray. Amen. It's meant to build your relationship. It's meant to strengthen your desire for God. Rise up and make this confession your standard. From today, make this confession your standard. I'm standing on the promise of God. I'm living steady. Working steady. Remain steady in unsteady times. Thank you. Give me You may be seated. Thank you. So you think that the ground is smooth for me? A little time you hear, Timmy Joshua is in the day, this Joshua is in America, this Joshua is there, this Joshua is there. Say, oh, this man, oh my God, he's not going through what I'm going through. Look at everything, it's just smooth for this man. Oh, the, the ground is not smooth, it's like this. Just like you are working on it, I'm working on it. But I'm living steady on unsteady war. Yes, it's not smooth for you. You go by the standard of the ground, but I'm not going by the standard. This is how the ground is vibrating, and you too go by that vibration. But the ground is vibrating like this, but I remain steady. Why is vibrating? I remain steady. I remain steady. I remain steady. We are living the same world. We are eating the same food. But the difference is why the ground is vibrating this way, this way, this way. But you go by that vibration. You go by that vibration. Because of that, whatever you carry seems to fall. But I walk steady on vibrating. I walk steady. I walk steady. I say, no, I refuse to, to be broke. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to live in poverty. And I refuse to walk in discouragement. There's a lot of discouragement around, but I refuse to walk in discouragement. But you are working on discouragement. So much poverty around. Just like you are seeing them, I, I'm seeing them. But I refuse to live in poverty. So we are working on the same floor. On steady world. You are living there, you are there, I'm there. And it's not steady at all. But you go by that vibration. But I refuse to. You can refuse to. The name Jesus is given to you. Behold, I give you power to trample on scorpion and snake. Let me pray with you. I pray the Lord give you a hearing heart. When situation comes, no matter either sickness, disease, either temptation, false accusation, whatever that comes to you and you know you are a Christian, yes, it is time to look unto God. Look unto God, the finisher of our faith. And he will show himself stronger. So take it, take it, take it. Take this message. Well, if you are not a Christian, if you are not a believer, this is not an issue. Because others, their situation, destroy them. Their situation cannot make them look unto God. Their situation cannot produce a sense of depending on God. No, no, no. Rather, their situation take them away. You may be seated. If you are a believer, Stop seeing your situation as what? As enemy. Let your situation 
produce a sense of depending on God. When we pray, Oh Lord, I cannot get along without you. He will show himself stronger. Thank you. Come on. What lesson have you learned from this message? I've learned that um, I must depend on God. Whatever challenge, whatever situation I go through, I must depend on God so it. Your situation should produce a sense. Amen. That is a feeling. I mean, it is time to go to God the more. Amen. You shouldn't leave that for your situation. You that have the situation should know that you need God the more. Amen. I need God the more. I need you more and more. I need you more and more. I need you more and more. That is the voice of situation. That is the voice of Christian situation. That is voice of a believer situation. That hear the voice. Situation, not others. Other situation cannot say this. But our situation, this is the boy. Sing again. Listen. Listen to the boy. I need you more and more. That is situation. I need you more and more. I need you more and more, Jesus, every day. Share with me. I need you more and more. I need you more and more. I need you more and more, Jesus, every day. Like a flower needs the rain, like a bird needs the wind. I need you more and more, Jesus. Every day. Thank you, thank you. You are crying. Why are you crying? What do you want to tell the world about this message? I'm so thankful for this message because it spoke into my heart. For every situation that I face, I mustn't think it's the end of the world. I must just know God is there for me and I must just push through and have the word of God in the inside of me. Thank you. Any other? Can I hear from you? How does the message appear to you? Yes, really. This is exactly correct. My situation demands to bring here. This is exactly correct. I'm a pastor, but every discouragement, disappointment, wherever I go, there is failures. That failures brings to me here. This is right, correct. Thank you. You say it's a ministers of God. They look at situation before now as enemy. But it's friend. It's of more of our friend than our enemy. So our situation is more of our friend than our enemy. Tell your neighbor. My situation is more of my friend than my enemy. Yes, it's more of our friend than our enemy. That is it. I know what situation have done in my life to me. I'm using my life to preach message to you. If not the situation from beginning of my ministry, I don't think I will be of this level today. Your rejection becoming a blessing to me. Your rejection leads to my closeness to God, helping me to build my relationship with God. Help me to have enough time for God. Yes, your rejection. At the time you realize that, uh, oh no, this is a man we should move closer to. Where? Well, I think I'm very, very close to God. 
At the beginning, if you accept me, I think I will have had a problem. Big problem. Your acceptance will have led to fall, to failure, to my problem. You accept them at the beginning. Acceptance at the beginning of my ministry, you accept me. Hey, it's a man of God, it's a man of God. Oh, I will have. Today, you will not talk of sin at all. Because then I was not mature to maintain acceptance. Now I am mature now to maintain acceptance. You can accept me. I'm, a, I'm ready. You know, time for everything. This is why I don't fight back because God allow you to reject me from the beginning of the ministry. The rejection from the beginning of the ministry, it was allowed by God. Because God was building me and I, I was not mature to have all over the world around me then. Because I need some experience. Oh, yes. You are my friend. Okay, thank you.